Code debugging is a productivity feature well known to developers from various programming environments. It allows you to control the execution of a piece of code line by line and look for problems that are hard to spot during normal run. It's like playing back a scene in a movie, frame by frame, and looking for mistakes that would otherwise pass unnoticed. Code debugging in Designer works just like that. First, you need to set up some breakpoints in your code by double-clicking a line number and using a keyboard shortcut. These markers tell Clover where to suspend the execution and give you the manual controls. Then, run the transformation using the debug action. This is important, as the following won't work in normal run mode. When Clover reaches a breakpoint, it will pause the component and Designer will switch to a debugging perspective. It's an interface that shows a bunch of useful views, giving you better understanding of what's going on in your code. Mainly, it opens up the suspended code in a separate tab. This is where you get to manually control the execution using functions found in the Run menu. Step into moves one statement further, or if it's a function, it dives into it. Step over executes the function and moves one statement further, staying on the same level. This section is useful when you're interested only in the result of the function, but not in debugging it. In each step, you can inspect all variables and inputs and outputs of the component in the variables view. Now the big deal. As you progress through the code, line by line, you can see how variables get filled with values or modified. At any point, you can resume execution until a breakpoint is encountered again, either another one or the same one in the next iteration. This saves you time you'd have to spend stepping through hundreds of lines of code. And by the way, you can add, disable or enable breakpoints in the breakpoints view at any time. When you're happy with your findings, stop the debug run just like you would terminate a running transformation. You can now switch back to your standard Clover ETL design perspective in the top right corner, close the code debugging tab and fix the problem in the component. But what happens if you set multiple breakpoints in different components? To understand that, let's look at how Clover pushes data through your transformation first. Think of the graph as a road network data records as cars, and components as either junctions or toll gates. When a component gets suspended on a breakpoint you've set, Clover doesn't ban movement of all the cars in the network. It just makes them wait at that one stop, maybe causing queues down the road. The other cars, taking different routes, are free to continue their business, as long as they don't end up in a traffic jam somewhere, or until they hit another breakpoint in some other component which makes them wait again. The rest continues happily in fluent traffic. To make some sense of this in your debugging perspective, the debug view is there to help. A tree structure, referred to as call stack, shows you all currently suspended components and functions. You can choose which one you want to control simply by selecting it. Notice the code view and variables update accordingly. The control actions apply to the selection. So for example, I can remove a breakpoint here and resume operation of this component, clearing the traffic jam, while I focus on debugging the other one. One important note for those using Java. You need to enable debugging of your Java code before being able to use it. Simply go to Window, Preferences, Clover ETL, ETL Runtime, and check Enable Debug on Port. After that, you will see some additional information in the debug view, plus you'll be able to debug Java code together with CTL in the same way. That's enough of an introduction to code debugging in Clover ETL 4.3. Happy coding!